This is Curtis coming at you from A Spread Studios once again covering the NFL 2021 season. Our Finns, we got a big primetime game tonight, our only primetime game of the year. And we're facing our nemesis that really beats the stuffing out of us year after year after year in the Ravens. So this could be a very interesting, interesting game to watch tonight. Let's hope it isn't. You know, this game is like a full circle game. 2019, we played Ravens at home, wasn't prime time. Got blown out, was it 59-10? Right after that, the, the analysts were melting down everywhere. The media was melting down there. The Dolphins are tanking. They're corrupting the game. They're, you know, they're going to be the worst team in history. They'll never win a game. They even talked about getting the commissioner involved. It was like everything possible every conspiracy theory every possible negative thing and then the Dolphins started winning ended up with a big win against the Patriots no one says I'm sorry eh, you know that's how it goes so we're back here again and it will tell us just how far we've come from 2019 till now now I don't expect the 59-10 uh, defeat but I expect us to lose but there's some interesting factors tonight. And I think if some of them play out, this could be a little bit better of a game than maybe we're thinking. Now, of course, Tua, Tua or not the Tua. Conspiracy theories, I hate to use that word because there's plenty of conspiracies going on everywhere. But the talk is that Tua is getting held out, his finger's not really, he's got a fractured finger. He's a smaller guy, can't really generate as much velocity as someone who's six foot four, can't grip the ball the same way. Swelling comes out. Anyone who's had a fracture, is anyone who's had it, and I've had many of them on the stands that this is ridiculous. I hope he does play. I want him to play. And the thing that it does encourage me is it looks like the Dolphins are making some moves on the offensive line, and they need to. Eichenberg is if it's all possible, is playing worse than Jackson. He looks uncomfortable and unathletic in his stance. He's slow to get off. He lacks power. It's just, it, it's, he is playing abysmal. And Jackson, who a lot of people say, oh, he's playing much better at guard. No, he's not. No, he's not. If you watch any tape, you know anything about football. It's, if you watch just a game the first time through, you might say that. But when you go back and actually watch his assignments and watch what he does, he literally is either being helped by the center or helping the center on 90% of his plays. And then a couple times they'll slide him down the line for a block, a slide block, and he'll either help somebody or pick up somebody extra. Very rarely is he left on his own, maybe one or two times a game, and he blows them. This is the worst left side of an offensive line that I have ever, ever seen. But good news is they, they, it looks like they might be giving Little a try, which I've been saying for months. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense why they haven't. And they signed Evan Bohing, who played with the Dolphins in 2019. Big boy, strong guy. Got a little weaknesses, but on his team, he's like an all-star. So maybe these two guys get into a lineup. I mean, if I saw them bench Jackson, I, I would almost feel secure with the staff again. I don't know if that's going to happen. We'll see. So there's a possibility that this atrocious, like if we're 32 in offensive lines, but really like we're like 45. I have never seen anything like this. So a possibility of some semblance of a coherent even like below average off offensive line would be a miracle. And it's, it is a possibility. So wait on that. Now, last week's pressure looks. We're going to cover that in a film study. Dolphins defense pressured Tyrod Taylor and the Texans all day. Tyrod Taylor, you have to take into account, he, he's stuck it to the Dolphins year after year. He's had a great, he, every time he plays us, he has a great game. He didn't have a great game. Texans are a little bit staff. It's like, eh. Their offensive lines, eh, they're really lacking talent. So a lot of our pressure looks really got off what they won't get off on better quarterbacks who will be able to make us pay. And then that leads us into the corner aspect. 
everything ties together. Nick Needham is our third corner. Sometimes Coleman comes in. But Coleman's really a fifth. Needham's really a fourth. This was all set up so Noah would be that third or maybe eventually a second, but he's not even playing. He's out of the lineup. Then you have to look at Howard. His knees are shot. He had, again, he had experimental surgery on those, or procedure, I should say. I think it was like stem cell injections uh, after 2019. Then he had the great season. But midweek, midway through a, a week at a practice, he was listed as missing practice because of his knees, and he hasn't been the same since. You watch him play, there's almost no explosion. He's always trailing. He's always playing bail. He's always playing over the top. There's no cut and explosion there that I can see. And so he's a big liability. Big liability. Byron Jones, he does get beat, but he looks like he's healed from his injuries and he makes plays in the run game. We'll go over that in the film. So really, with this defense, you need three quality corners. And we really only have one at this point. And it's not Howard's fault. It's the knees. Need him. He's doing his best. But he lacks certain traits, bigger, stronger, and faster. So he struggles. So it's going to be a little bit tough for us to stop the tight ends tonight. Bateman and Jackson on the move. So we're not going to see this defense. And you can't really judge them accordingly because they don't have the tools. But overall, if this offensive line could pick up, it could be a more competitive game than we thought. Now... I want to go over these statistics, uh, some images that came up on uh, Bleach Report. Let's take a look at this one. Dolphins offense 2020, 25.3 points per game, 339 yards per game, 5.3 yards per game. That was with, with three offensive rookies, limited receiver talent, and for most of the season, too, who didn't know to play in the book, didn't know audibles, didn't know pre-snap, post-snap, alerts, and whatever else you could possibly, and he wasn't healthy. That's what we're able to generate. 2021, 17.2 uh, points per game over a touchdown. 297.4 yards per game. That's uh, 43 yards, uh, 42 yards or uh, less. And then 4.7 yards per play, which is almost half a yard, it's over half a yard less. Why? Because Chain Gailey does not suck. Because Chain Gailey is not here. And what we have as a staff and as an offensive line coach is substandard and not nearly of the caliber last year. And again, I'll ask, for those who watch the show, they'll know. For those who don't, why is Chain Gailey not here? And it's not because he retired because he wanted to. And it's not because Flores got rid of him. Chris Greer. Chris Greer. And you can thank him for this season. So here's another one. We are the second lowest payroll for our offensive line at $20 million. Of all the teams on this list, we have the worst offensive line by far. And we expended a first round pick on Jackson. Second round pick on Eichenberg. Second round pick on Hunt. Two fourth round picks on Kinley. And a third round pick on Dieter. And we got bupkis. Who does this point to? Brian Flores? No. How does a coach expected to run a team like this? Again, it goes back to Greer. But, thankfully... As I told you a couple of weeks ago, as you can see here, NFL teams that need a new head coach. Six teams that clearly need to make a change for 2022. Again, the poster boy of change is Brian Flores. He needs to be removed. It's him. It's all him. It's all him. And this next little clip I got here, this little image, scares me. Because I told you a couple of weeks ago, he was going to be the axe boy. They made the move for Watson. And honestly, I think Ross was so desperate to make it happen so he could have an excuse to keep, keep, uh, to keep Greer. Because I don't think he wants to get rid of him. Ross said he was intimidated by Brian Parcells, a true football guy. Who has he had since then? A bunch of lilies. 
quiet lilies to run the team. And he's desperate to keep this incompetent lily. And here, on this one, this image right here, this was, first we got, we got to fire Flores on Bleach Report, and then it was followed up, or was, this was the first, and then it was followed up by Flores. The competition committee is adding blah, 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 a bunch of people, Dolphins GM Chris Greer to its ranks. 69, uh, 62 likes, nine conversation pieces. If he's on his way out, why is he on this committee? Why is this being mentioned? Because to me, it's more public massaging. It makes no sense to have a GM who's going to get expunged and fired to be put on his committee when the season's more than halfway done. This is a bad sign that Ross intends to keep Greer. I'm not saying it is a sign, but it's a little hint along with many other things that Greer will be back. And to me, if this happens, we're finished because Ross is going to be replaced by his little protege he's been raising up for decades as his close personal confidant. Bruce Beal will do just like he's doing, bringing in lilies that are supposed to run the football operations and don't know Jack and they're backstabbing worms. I just pray this is not the case. <sighs> anyway, let's take a look at the film about the third down defense in Miami and see what we see. All right, this was a critical third down. And you can see it's, you know, it's, it's basically everything is about pressure. This edge pressure came off by Jones and Holland makes the pick. You know, and it's, it's a little bit more than just, oh, they overloaded. Watch, you'll see Jones just kind of creep at the last minute and then make it around to the side. So it was a really nice job by him to get that blitz because he timed it perfect. And then, of course, Holland to be there. So this is one third down and you got one pick. Here's another third down. It's a third down and long, third down and eight, I believe, or something like that. Again, they got the pressure look. And here's another one, another pressure look, another man coverage. Jones gets beat, but if you take it back to the beginning, it was just, this is what's going to happen when you have these pressure looks. He just gets inside, and he just leans too much, and he gets to swim, and that was it. But that happens, you know, unless you're Deion Sanders or absolutely elite cornerback. Again, more pressure. Pressure comes from the edges, forces the overthrow. So really, the, it's about the pressure. So the pressure's really working today. Some nice blitz dialed up, though, but you got his Josh Boy has got a, a nulla one here. But this is where Jones gets beat again. And you have to remember, too, on this, you see Jones drops, and he kind of gets lost. This is a really great throw in chemistry. So you got Jones being victim twice, but he also comes up later on in this game several times. Nella pressure look, man coverage, and this probably should have been a touchdown. And this is Needham getting beat by a double move. This probably would have been a touchdown with a really good quarterback, but... The pressure does force it and change the angle because Tyrod's short. So again, it goes back to the pressure. Nulla man look, pressure look. But then you'll get, you'll see here that just Needham just doesn't have the burst and reaction timing to. It's not a pick, you know, it's not even a rub. He's just late to deliver. You see right here, just loses it and just a real nice cut by 13. And that's all she wrote. So it's really, at this point, we're seeing more. We're seeing pressure being is the key factor, and the key factor to the negative is just be getting beat one-on-one. -on -one. And there's a nice play, Agba. Again, the pressure comes in off the edges, and you know it doesn't help that Tyra's so short. Howard would have been beat if you watch the bottom. If it wasn't for Agba, Howard's knees are shot. He doesn't really have much bounce or explosion or cut in it. He just plays very soft. He just doesn't have it anymore. Those knees are really been messed up since like the third or fourth week. Again, you can see Agba do his thing. Pressure look, man coverage. And this should have been a touchdown or a first down. But Tyra just really couldn't deliver. And the pressure gets in it. Van Ginkle kind of forces it early. But a better quarterback might have made Miami pay. And that's, that's again, that's what it's going to come down to.
you know, at these kind of pressure looks. It really victimizes the lesser quarterbacks and some of the elite ones. They'll just take advantage. Heavy, heavy pressure. Look, look at this. But then they drop some guys off. The pressure gets in there. And Coleman makes the pick, which was really nice. Miami really dialed up some nice pressures. And Coleman had a very, very good coverage cut underneath for that one. I like how they drop, kind of waste a lot of blockers, and they get the edge pressure there by Holland. And Coleman just really did a great job. Let's see the pressure, pressure and man. But the rub right over here gets Roberts. They get caught, and there's no way Roberts is going to make it. There's too much traffic, and this is just an easy pitch and catch. And this is the way teams, especially really good teams, are going to be able to beat this pressure look. Big play. Perfect call against the uh, defensive play. Not so much a pressure look here. You got the only got four men rushing, really kind of playing zone. Pass is a real nice pass, but this is what I said about Jones. Just gets in there and plays physical. It was real nice coverage by him playing over with a cover three look with some man underneath with Howard. And he's so physical. You don't have to see it on this tape, but the way he plays the run and how much he phys how physical he is is very impressive. Now, this was, the, this was a big play. This is really where Miami could have put their foot in the ground and said, hey, we got a great day. But they get beat. And you'll see here it's all based on one person failing to understand the zone coverage, and that's Baker. So I'll check it again. Zone coverage is very difficult. You have to really, you can't leave any. So Baker is going to pull, drop and play corner. He's trying to play, drop deep and play the wide zone, but his job has to be the short middle. And he runs right into another zone with the defender right there. So he screwed this one up. This was Baker just not playing the zone right. And without him there, that was a dead play. Heavy pressure look. Uh, they bring the pressure, lots of man, and again, the rub is how you beat this pressure defense right here. Uh, you know, you got to, you got to, when you, once you get this inside look, the, the only way you can beat this All right, so as you can see here, really, it's a give-and-take defense. They're going to give up first downs, and they're going to give up some big plays, but it's the sacks, the forced passes, the interceptions. This is what this defense was predicated on, as we saw last year. But last year, we had two healthy corners through the whole season, and we had a competent offense to balance it out. We have... Don't have that this year. So you're going to see some of the weaker teams that these defense is going to look highly effective. And then against the better teams, they're not going to look as effective. And it's going to be like, Josh Boyer sucked. It's not that. You cannot run a pressure defense, man coverage, when you only have one active corner, really in the proper position. Needham's a four, Coleman a five. Howard is a star, but he's injured. He's, he's like a, a fourth right now with that knee. And, you know, to be truthful, Byron's not really a first. He's like maybe a two and a half. So this third down defense, you know, you saw Baker make a miss, uh, miss a, a zone coverage assignment. And really, if, it's, if the pressure wasn't there, we'd have been chewed up. So it's pressure or die. And these corners, if they were better, would allow that pressure to that extra second. It's all about a second. So this is, it's, you can't, it's not about the calls. Same calls pretty much as last year. It's just about an incompetent offense 
and a secondary that's got good safeties, but not enough guys to play man the way we like. So it'll be interesting to see how it looks tonight. Uh, Gaskin, there was a call last week. Uh, I think it was Moose, uh, Daryl Johnson, had said he'd missed a hole. I meant to put it into the film, but it didn't. But I'll put it in this week. We'll study him again, see how he looks. But really, he was good through the whole game. That one call where he'd missed the hole really didn't, if you watch it from his eyes, and I'll show that. So I'm not really concerned about Gaskin, aside from the fumbles. Uh, the offensive line we talked about. And the linebacker play, you know, hit or miss. We don't have an elite linebacker. Baker is good, a little overpaid. And so that's it. That's basically how we're at. So we got a big game tonight. Let's watch it. Even if we're close, this could be a good sign. It'll be interesting to see if the team quits. It'll be interesting to see if they change the offensive lineup of two plays. You know, so there is reasons to watch this. I'm very depressed. I really think that that Flores is going to be the punching bag and Greer will return. I really do. I really, really do. It just all the signs point to. There's, I mean, there's no reason he isn't the absolute focus, giving all the evidence, all the information. But, suit hustle. This is Curtis saying thank you for staying to the end. Please like, comment, uh, subscribe. Comments mean the most. Subscribes and likes help me with the Google overlords and keep me in business. I really appreciate that. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Ace Per Head, the best online sports book. They want to let you know they're world-class software. You can get on the action with friends, family, and coworkers as a local bookie. They're fantastic. They, they, they treat this dumb monkey really well. I, I'm grateful for them and I'm grateful for you. And let's really just keep our minds focused on what really matters, and that's getting rid of Greer. Enjoy the game tonight. Try to find something good in it. Watch it as a coach. You know, try to find the good and enjoy. Life's short. Just enjoy it. This is Curtis saying thank you. Catch you next time and be well.